For part b, we need to find we need to get the first derivative and take the derivative of that because that's how the derivatives work. So let's say we have part b here. And for part b, we need to remember find the concavity and the inflection points. So to find the concavity, we need to take the second derivative, which is going to be f, f double prime of x is equal to 12x, and the constant drops. And we're left with this. Now in this example, a concavity, when I, when I hear the word concavity, I think of a tooth. So let's say we had a tooth like that. In this case, this would be an upward concavity. This, this thing right here, an upward concavity, to me, represents a smile. So that's how I logically remember it. A negative, let's say your upper teeth look like this. This was negative. So this concavity right here, to me, negative represents a frown. So that's how I remember that. A negative, a negative number would represent a negative concavity. And somewhere in between there, just like before, let's say I had a, a roller coaster, let's use the analogy of a roller coaster. This would be concaving down, so it's kind of like a, a frown. And this would be a smile. And somewhere between there, from having a negative, meaning a frown, and a positive, meaning a smile, we have the number zero. So in this case, we also want to ha get 12x and set it equal to zero. So we find that point where we're, we're changing from negative to a positive. I divide both sides by 12, and I get x is equal to zero. That's my critical point for my second derivative, which are different, right? So let's, just like before, what did we do before? We used a number line, right? So let's, let's draw a number line from negative infinity to infinity. And in this case, we only have one critical number, which is going to be 0. And we're going to have how many test regions? Right. <laughs> we're going to have two test regions, just A and B. And what are some good points here? Let's say negative 1 and 1. Those will be my, my test points, right? Test points. And what do we do with those test points? Where do we plug them in? Well, since we want to know whether we're concaving down or con concaving up, and concavity represents the second derivative, we're going to plug it into our second derivative. Right, So we're going to have our equation f double prime of x is equal to 12 times that number, the two test points that we have. The two test points go here, negative 1 and negative 1. If I plug in this test point in here, I would be testing for test region number A. right? And if I plug in a 0 here, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. If I plug in a 1 here and a 1 here, then I'm testing for test region B. So for this example, the number that I get here is going to be test region A. The number that I get here would be test region B. What do I get when I multiply 12 times negative 1? I get a negative number, negative 12. What do I get when I multiply 12 by a positive 1? I get a positive 12. So what that means is that a negative number in our second derivative represents a frown, or a concave down. And if I get a positive number, then that represents a smiley face, which is concave up. So that's how we would label those parts. So we can go ahead and, from negative infinity to zero, say that we have a, if I plug in a negative number, I get a frown from here to here. And from 0 to infinity, I get a 
smiley face. And somewhere between this change of negative concavity to positive concavity, we have something called an IP, an inflection point. So we're going to label that. But first, let's write the intervals. So we would be concaving down from negative infinity to zero, and we would be concaving up from zero to infinity. Those would be our intervals. To find our, our inflection point, inflection point, we need to find what the y value is. We know that the x value is zero, but we don't know what y is. So what will we, what will we do with that? Well, y, remember, represents f of x. What is f of x? f of x was 2x cubed 2x cubed minus 18x plus 1. So let's go back and write what f of x was. 2x cubed minus 18x plus 1. So if I wanted to find the y value, what I would do is I would replace x with 0. So this would be 0, that would be 0, and that would be zero. All those x's would be zero. What is zero cubed? Zero. So this, this whole term becomes zero. This whole term also becomes zero because 18 times zero is zero, and we're left with a one. So our inflection point is zero comma one. That's our I, our IP. And that's it. We're done with this problem.